Today, let's compare the potassium salts of the oxo acids of group 7 elements. Group 7 in the D block includes manganese, technetium and rhenium. So what we have here is potassium permanganate, potassium pertechnetate and potassium perenate. Of course, we need to measure the dose rate for the pertechnetate. It is 23.4 microsieverts an hour and 0.1 microsieverts an hour inside of the container. Let's start with the most obvious characteristic, the color. The color is dependent on the electron configuration. However, manganese in this compound is in the oxidation state plus seven, meaning it has no electrons that can be excited by light to produce a color impression. So why isn't it white? The key term here is called charge transfer. Manganese is very small and in the oxidation state plus seven. It has a extremely high charge density. As a result, some charge is transferred back to the manganese from the oxygen atoms. This charge transfer creates an extended electron system that can be excited by light, resulting in the violet color of the permanganate ion. Pertechnetate, on the other hand, is truly not snow white like the perinate, but rather dirty grayish. This color cannot be explained by charge transfer complex, but rather by the fact that technetium is radioactive. Due to the radioactive decay, trace amounts of technetium oxygen compounds such as technetium dioxide form. The technetium dioxide is analogous to the manganese dioxide, which is also known for a brown black color. Perinate is snow white because rhenium in the plus 7 oxidation state is not a good electron acceptor. Consequently, the electrons remain closer to the oxygen atoms compared to the previous salts, requiring more energy, shorter wavelengths to excite them. In technical terms, the homolumo gap is too large for electrons to be excited by electromagnetic radiation in the visible range. Before we leave the topic of color, let's look at the UV vis spectrum. And here you can see how the absorption shifts towards the shorter wavelengths as we move down the period. The absorption band of the permanganate is in the green 530 nanometer range, which gives a purple appearance. Such broadened absorption bands are characteristic for charge transfer transitions. Unlike FF transitions, which have a very discrete and defined energy gaps, resulting in sharp absorption bands. The right y-axis is for the pertechnetate, as we couldn't have it as concentrated as the other salts. There will be more on technetium on this channel. But here's the most important thing. Technetium plus 7 in solution is not pink or red as stated in some older books. This is due to a 70-year-old mystery concerning the formation of polyoxometallates, but more on that in another video. There's another trend in the transition metals. The stability of the highest oxidation state decreases as you move down the group. This means that the permanganate ion is strongly oxidizing. Pertechnetate with technetium in the plus 7 oxidation state is still quite stable and the perinate is practically non-oxidizing. While we are on the topic of electron configuration, you can look around in the periodic table and see that not only the permanganate, pertechnetate and perinate are isoelectronic, but you can also look to the right and left of the group and see another tetraoxoanion, which is the chromate ion. And also the osmium tetroxide is also isoelectronic with all these components. These are all metal atoms that have completely given up their valence electrons and are tetrahedrically surrounded by four oxygen atoms. Recognizing and verifying such trends in the periodic table is really important for chemistry. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.